Hey everyone, today we are talking all about some high engagement addition and subtraction activities. Now, if you have followed my channel for a while, you'll know that 99% of the time I share no prep or very low prep activities that you can take and use in your K through two classroom right away. But every once in a while, I have this really creative idea that I just know students are going to love. And that's what today's video is all about. I actually got to use a few of these activities last week in a first grade classroom, and they absolutely loved them, and my own boys love them as well, so I wanted to dedicate a little video to these. So a quick little disclaimer before I dive in, while none of these activities are super heavy on prep, they do require a little bit, so if you are very stressed out right now and you're thinking, I can't add another thing to my plate, save this video for later, or watch the ideas and write down the ones that you wanna do later, and and save them for a time where you can prep them like over your vacation, on a weekend, or maybe if you have some parent volunteers that can help you, don't stress about it. So if you're ready to see these ideas, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and let's get started. High engagement activity number one, are solve it spinners. Now this is laminated so it looks a little funky, but this I came up with a few years ago after I went to an escape room. And in the escape room, there was a huge wheel like this and I had to match it up perfectly and solve this puzzle. And I was just so engrossed in this activity and loved it that I came home and I was like, ding, I know how I can use this with my kids. To play solve it, I'll show you an example from the addition version. You need a spinner. This is like the crack the code spinner here. And all you'll have to do is prep these spinners. And now just side note, I wouldn't prep one for each kid in your class. I would prep about four or five and they would do it in a center. Um, they also could share them, but they would have to be using the same puzzle. So I like to have them independently. But let me just show you how to use it. This is so much fun. There are actually 30 different puzzles that I have for you and they're all half sheets. Um, there's This is the addition version down here. And in order to set this up, students will have to look at the top left corner. So this is how they'll decide what their spinner needs to be on. So let's solve one right here. This one is five equals F. So they need to make sure that the F is lined up with the five. You can see that right here. This simply spins around. You do like the top, you'll print out a bottom layer and a top layer and uh, fasten it with a brad fastener. And then as long as the five is lined up here, that means this puzzle is ready to be solved. So all students will do is go ahead and solve each problem. So zero plus three equals three. They will find three here, three equals S and then they'll write down S here. They will solve the rest of the puzzle to see what it says, and then they actually have to draw and label their answer. School bus. I hope you could see that these are seriously so much fun. The first graders in my class were just begging to use it. So I did 10 minute rotations so the whole class could get a chance to solve different puzzles. And that was the addition version. I have subtraction version and I have a number sense and a place value version as well. And I also have them bundled right here for a discounted price. High engagement activity number two are these math mysteries that I created last year. Here is an example of one, this is the subtraction switcheroo. And here you can see it says you are going to become a detective as you tried to solve the subtraction switcheroo. So in this mystery, somebody stole eight different dogs bones. They hid them all around a playground with some clues. And you have to solve the subtraction clues to figure out which bone belongs to each dog. I made a bunch of these last year and I love them because they are available in a printable version where you can store them in a file folder for them to solve the case. And they're also preloaded into Google and Seesaw so your students could do that independently spread out over a week. Let me show you how these work. Okay, so here is a hands-on example of the subtraction switcheroo. And I would actually store it in a file folder just like this. And inside the file folder, you will find the bones, the dogs, there will be some clues, 
and the answer sheet here. So let me, let me move some out of the way so you can see. So what you will see is there are eight different dogs. And I like to have the kids, you know, actually take these out and they are more tactile, makes it a little bit more real for them. So here's all the different dogs and they have to find out which number bone belongs to each dog. So here's all the bones and they have a number. So one clue today says find Bob's bone. So we're gonna find out what bone belongs to Bob. In order to do that, students will need to, let me move the response sheet. Students will need to complete this clue. So they'll have to kind of solve it down here. So seven minus two equals five. They'll come down to the key. Five is M, so. M. 11 minus 3 is 8. O. Oh. So let me quickly go ahead and solve this and we'll see what the clues look like. So what I love about these clues is you can see there's even more math students have to solve. So the clue is more than 8. So Bob's bone must be more than 8. So we would then, or students would, put out all the bones and see which one it must be. So Bob's bone must be number nine. And they would match that up. They can write down the answer up here so they remember. And these are just the recording sheets that if they're working in a group, what I would do is I would give uh, students, they could each have like one or two clues um, to kind of work with because there's eight different ones. And then they would solve it and come together and Bob would be bone number nine. So they would solve all the clues, they would match up all the dogs to the bones and they would solve the subtraction switcheroo. And just to quickly show you what the digital version looks like, this is the Google Slides version. It's also available in Seesaw. When you get your copy, um, it will have a video for students can watch to see how to play. And in that video, I read the actual mystery, we introduce the dogs and the missing bones. Now over here, since students will likely be doing this independently, um, not with a partner, students will want a way to track their progress because they won't solve the whole mystery in one day. So what students will do is they will click on a clue in the park. So they'll go to slide six. Here's Bob's bone and they'll solve it the same way I did with paper and pencil. So they'll need to seven minus two is five M they'll put it here. So they'll go ahead and solve it and then they can uh, either drag the bone over or they can simply use that question mark and write in nine here as their answer. And at the very end, they will make sure that they have dragged all the bones to the correct spot before their teacher checks it. This is like where their mystery is solved. And then because we won't finish this all in one day, as students finish a clue, they will simply drag a star over to show that they've already completed that one. So when they pick it up in the next day or two, they will click on a different clue to solve. When I tell you that my own two boys, Theo and Calvin loved these, I mean it, I could not keep up. They wanted me to create more and more. So I do have quite a few. I have them here on TPT and I actually put them under their own little mystery math category. So as I add new ones, you can find them there. Activity number three is one I have shared before and it is called addition grab bags. Now this is super simple and I even have a free recording sheet for this game. So this is what it looks like. You will need two bags filled with different manipulatives and this is where you can, you know, get fun, do bears, cubes, you can use seasonal erasers, whatever you want to throw in there. And students will simply close their eyes, reach their hands in both of the bags, and pull out as many as they can. Now I like to use two different types of manipulatives to show different parts. So here you can see they have seven cubes, so they'll write down seven and five bears, and then they will just add that up together and write it on the recording sheet. 
I would definitely laminate that recording sheet so they could do that over and over. And while it is a very simple activity, it is very engaging because they're seeing how many they can grab. And I try to challenge them to make different sums too. So that way they're not always grabbing the same amount. They might try to grab more with one hand, less with another hand, and they can just continue playing for about 10 minutes. It's a great tactile way to practice addition. And last but not least, high engagement activity number four is subtraction bowling. Now this is an oldie but a goodie and it's pretty simple. You are just going to need 10 pins. If you don't have bowling pins, you can use things like empty plastic bottles, something that will easily knock over and you'll need a ball to roll and try to knock them over. Now this is obviously high engagement because what kid doesn't love to, you know, go bowling, especially in the middle of their school day, but it's also a fun one for other kids to get involved. Actually just a little bit ago, my son's first grade teacher, she's amazing. She had them do this in their classroom and she had the students set up their desks in a circle and the person bowling would go in the middle. That way each time someone would go bowling all the other students at their desk had a whiteboard and a marker and they would write down the subtraction equation to match what was just bowled. This way it keeps everybody accountable as only one person is bowling at a time and this game is also easy to differentiate because you can just add a few more pins. Of course you'd explain that to the class. Let's add two more and practice these equations or you could take some away if you are working in a kindergarten class and need a little bit more support there. So there you have four different high engagement math activities for addition and subtraction that you might wanna try with your K through two students. I'll go ahead and link the Solve It Centers and the mystery math games down in the description below. And I'll also throw in that freebie for the grab bags, that hands-on addition activity as well. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If any of these ideas really stuck out as fun ones to you, let me know down in the comments. I always read my comments and it helps give me some ideas of video videos or activities you guys want to see. Before you leave, be sure to subscribe to my channel and click that bell. That way you get notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.